Good afternoon and welcome back to the garden. Apologise for the noise, but the wind is in the wrong direction today. But we need to film, so we'll get on with it. I'm going to put some carrots in. These are Nantes Five. They're actually early Nantes Five. I want to get at least a couple of rows in to start them off, and then we'll fill the the plot with a few more and then save the space at the end for the main garden. This is the only way I can grow carrots on this heavy land. I cut a slit with the spade, I put the spade in, move it backwards and forwards to make the, the trench if you like and then a backfill with spent compost. It's been through a screen, got the uh, the roots etc out and it's been stored this is the spent compost it's not our own compost at all this is just what we've had in the hanging baskets and the pots around the house the tomatoes so it's really it's had all the goodness taken out of it but that's what we want we don't want no nothing strong down there or the carrots will fork and all we do just fill the trench up I do it with my hand it's easier just fill it up to the top stone there look that's what we don't want stones in it to the top then like that over there just press it gently down and don't really compact it checking for stones all the time then top it off like that and the back of my hand I just take them down for and that's where we put the seed here's the seed it's carrot early nanties five I put a few in my hand then take a little pinch now what they say is put your carrots in very thin but what I found in the past where we've gone very thin half of them well so many doesn't germinate and so you've got a very thin line so I would sooner put a few more in and then go along and just pull a few out if and when they germinate and that way you've still got some carrots not spaces you see not a not a great lot in there but it'll be easier this way at least I'll have some carrots if half of them germinate rather than if it was just thin and none now once they're in it's cutting and seed compost it is a peat free look as you can see and it's got some um, a little bit of feed in it but obviously not a lot at all so we just put that on top it looks like it's more sand than anything else. but it is very fine I'll give them a do it's not a bad compost actually just all the way through and then the normal I just go along my, my hand to make sure it's contacting those seeds and it doesn't blow away so easy like that then I just put a drop of water on it I'm not watering the land first because as you know it's terribly wet anyway but this will just hold things down now hopefully in a few weeks we'll, or less we'll see some carrots coming on as you know the soil temperature is about 9 degrees today but we've had a few sunny days so that might vary a little we do have some frost coming tonight but the land is so warm that will radiate heat and it won't freeze over so much. You might just get a little bit on top. 
now these arches you see I brought those up I've actually painted and repaired all the arches ready so I can get another year out of them and that is the space ready for when I put the carrots in because I will put a cover on it to keep the carrot fly off mainly strip just there I've left I was going to put the parsnips in there but from there on has been prepared for leeks and celery so there's actually some manure in there and I think they'll be too close to the parsnips and the parsnips will will fork out so we'll find somewhere else for the parsnips and in the meantime we might use that for uh, spring onion or even lettuce inside this tunnel so it won't be wasted we will fill it with something now another little job we can do while the the weather's with us although there's quite a chilly wind uh, is to put some feed on these strawberries so we'll nip over there and do that next now we want to put some fertilizer on these strawberry plants because we've had that much rain and a little bit of flood it did get to this once but the obviously that amount of rain and water it leaches out the nitrogen and the potassium out of the soil it doesn't hold in the soil it will go away so we need to replace it what I've got is this plant food it's continuous release slow release and as you can see UK fertilizer declaration is 22 714 with micronutrients the 22 and the 7 we need to replace the 14 is okay and I'm going to scatter it around the plant where the roots are you see and I'll do four and then show you don't forget the other side look and then once I've got it on I get a little hand fork and I go around the plants working it into the soil a little the next time it rains it'll start and release that fertiliser for these strawberries and make them grow a bit quicker so all you do is break round obviously any weeds that you see especially the perennial weeds get them out I'll only do these four just to give you an idea what to do but we do need to get those nutrients back into the soil there you go I should do all of them like that later when they've grown a little bit we'll take some of our own compost not manure and we'll just sprinkle it round them as well so that'll give them that extra boost for later on even if it's after the finished fruiting they'll still want something to develop the plants ready for next year now I've actually already done the garlic with the same fertilizer because that really has been under some water this year if it does come at least we've tried to give it a feed to give it a boost okay so we'll go now and show you the onions we're putting in today after my disaster with growing onions from seed this year which have all been turned over now and like I said I'm going to get some sets and set those so we've got a last row to put in of the sets 
and I'll just show you where I got them from Jameson Brothers and they're premium quality as you know we've had onion sets before from various places and you sort of reject at least a third of them well I reject about a third of them and then just plant the half decent ones the sort of thing they sent they are absolutely brilliant no problem at all I think I actually threw out two that had gone a bit soft when I was planting them now I have a stick that I make the hole with but what I found was when I was putting the others in with the stick I have to they're that big that I can't get them in so I have to give it a bit more with my finger and then put them in and just close the top a bit now the resident blackbird will come along and pull some of these out so you have to keep checking and I'm going at that oh let me show you the other way I'm going at that distance up between so if they do get a bit bigger they'll uh, they've got a bit of space to grow and put them in and then remember when you're putting them in don't grab them and just push them in because you'll damage that and your onion will rot got that the wrong way around again there look nice hole move it to one side a little bit so it's the same all the way look and then with them being a bit bigger I just make the hole a bit wider now this is row number six I have three rows of red and three rows of brown ones right I'll just finish this row and then I'll get back to you now for the new gardeners when you're putting them in this you can see where the roots are and you can see where the onions going to grow out now if there's a little bit of old leaf etc and skin on the top I just pull it off and then plant them yeah I don't go to this detail but you could if you wanted and that's how I like to put them in and then one more where it is about there just clean the top off if you like and then pop it in and what I do is I just tighten it don't press too hard you don't damage the ball I've got three left over what I should do is I should put these in some long pots and then if there is a failure I'll just come round and replace it with one of these now when my onion seed wasn't going very well I was beginning to get worried I thought well we'll have to get some sets anyway while we were shopping I bought some brown onion sets Stuttgart I think they are and or Stuttgarten to give them the proper name and I put those in some root trainers in that little plastic greenhouse that we put up behind the shed they're growing quite well they're this high so next week I shall bring those down and we'll put those in just here but there'll be quite a difference in the two but I haven't put them in the warm I just put them in that plastic greener so they're perfectly all right it's just as cold in there as it has been at night here now I'll just tell you how I got the soil down to that from that now this is quite hard because as this dries out it goes hard because it's clay so what I did I got the long handled rake and I just went along chomping 
and it broke the soil down beautiful that confirmed it a little because your onions need a firm bed so by chomping it down it firmed the soil up nicely for planting the onions obviously the same as everything this year as soon as they start to grow I shall put some of that slow release round them to replace the nutrients that have been washed out in the flood now this year I didn't make the whiteboard for the plots and what to lime etc that's because we had that problem with the septic tank and the floods I just didn't get time to do it so the only thing I can tell you really is the plots which is this one this one and half the one next to it is where we're going to put the Brussels sprouts I have lined them I just put some hydrated lime on and then raked it in and the rain has now washed it in now it's not too late if you still want to put some lime on while we've got this unpredictable weather it'll soon wash in but if you don't want to use hydrated lime use ground limestone but it just takes a little longer hydrated lime is quite quick reacting now that'll be it for this week in the sunshine but a very cold wind i hope you've enjoyed it and we'll look forward to seeing you next week and there's just an airplane coming over so that's good timing bye now